and then what we're going to try next is using bevel so we'll just right click to undo and then just bevel this out to where we want it to go and then just to be precise about this one we're going to select all those edges or just select one and hold shift and click if it doesn't work then just select them all like that we'll just hit connect and we'll add three in and then we'll hold alt and deselect so we only have that one and then using scale so that's R on your keyboard or just up here just making sure you select the big inner triangle just scale it up Okay, so select that edge and we'll hit loop and then again scale that up select that edge hit loop and scale that up press 4 to go to polygon mode select all these inner polys and hit extrude and this time we'll do this one a bit smaller so say 2.5 and also in fact we'll just scale this in on the x-axis a bit Okay, we'll select the end cap, we'll bevel that out, and we'll bevel out again, then extrude, and then bevel. I'm just going to use a kind of mix of extrude and bevel basically to finish up this part of the model. Okay, so there we have the engine area modeled. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is adding in this connector area that connects the top engine to so this main kind of body. So if we just Alt X this, so we can see what well, that's going to come down to. So in fact probably the first thing we should do is just let's just put in a basic model to here so that we can model this in correctly. So if we just add in a box, let's line it up to there. X, so then we'll just use and scale to bring this in. Okay, so we have a kind of rough object now that kind of shows us where we need that engine bit to be. So the next thing we want to do is select this engine, hold control, hold shift, and drag to bring that model, the uh, clone of it down and make sure you're not on copy, you want to be on instance. Now the difference between a copy and an instance is um, a copy will just be a copy of this object and you can affect each one kind of individually. If you do an instance then if you affect one it'll affect the other. So just to demo this with our clone here we'll just say select these two vert, um, polygons and just extrude out and you'll see it's doing it on this one too. So it's a really kind of useful way to work. The way you can tell if something is instanced is if you come up to your modifier stack, you'll see that this has kind of dark black lettering. And so does the other one. And if you select your actual main carapace, which is your main the main body of the ship, you'll see that doesn't have dark writing because it's not instanced in the scene. Okay, so what we want to do next, we'll just hide this one here. And in our front view, we'll just use swift loop 
to draw in these cuts so that we can extrude down from here. So we'll select two faces, hit extrude, and this extrude down. Now you notice how it's not extruding as we want it, so just remember that you need to find the setting that's correct, and this time it's group normals. And we'll hit OK on that. And we'll just kind of bring this down to where it should connect on the model. Make both of these visible and we'll just unhide all. Now you notice that this one here is obviously facing the same way so if you just hit the mirror button change it to Y and then hit OK you'll see you can get them both to match up correctly. Uh, the other thing we wanted to do is smooth this one off so we'll just apply a smooth modifier and hit auto smooth and you'll see it's done it to both of them. Okay so the next thing we're going to do is just check the kind of overall size of everything. Um, I will just hide that one for now. And the first thing we can see is we've got this one a bit big so what we'll do is we'll just select the scale tool here. Now from our gizmo we just we can see you can scale it kind of uniformly but if you select each axis you can actually kind of scale something in and out scale it just along the z-axis or the y-axis but then you also have these inner bits so those two there will just scale it along those two those two will just scale it along those two and the two we want are these two here so we can just scale the size but not the actual length. So probably something like that should do. So we'll just go back to move mode. <coughs> Bring that in a little bit. We probably need to do it a little bit further. Something like that, and there we go, we've got the size now a lot more accurate. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is have a look at trying to get this, uh, this shape in here. And we're actually going to try and model that straight from... Um, this object here. So we're going to cut in and then kind of extrude out. So we'll just make that visible. Now the first thing we see is we're going to need a cut around here. So if we just go to Swift Loop and place that kind of roughly where we think we'll need it, should be fine. And we can also see we're going to need a cut around here. So we'll swift loop again and we'll add in a cut there. In fact, well I know we'll leave that cut in there and I'll just show you another little trick. Come out of edge mode. Make it so we've only got these two objects selected. Go back into edge mode. Now if you see if we move this edge along here you'll see it will obviously distort the shape. If you come up to edit geometry and turn on edge mode and then move that up, you'll see it will actually move with the actual shape definition. Okay, with that in place, make sure we turn that off again. Go back onto none. And then we should have everything we need to kind of.
kind of model this. Okay, so set that shape. <coughs> and using G, we'll turn off that grid. And I'm just going to, just for the sake of being precise, we'll line this up with the center line. to edge mode on here and we'll just pull pull out these edges like so we'll do the same with these points here Okay, if we go to polygon mode, we'll just select those and we'll just extrude those out. Remember to go into extrude options so that you can pick group normals and then we'll just drag this out to here. Okay, that will do for now. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is delete these two polygons here. And then, uh, just to show you a little trick on how to kind of, well, select a whole kind of surface like this, if you turn on by angle, we'll reduce that angle down, then it'll actually select an area of polygons based on any that um, within that angle, so it can be really useful that. Okay, so we'll just extrude this up. Now, what we want to do next is go to vertex mode, and we actually want to weld these vertices onto here. Now, if you go to target weld and try that, you'll see it won't work, and the reason it won't work is because we have these two inner polygons here. It needs to have a, a gap for it to be able to target weld. So if we delete those two, go back to vertex mode and then just try sticking these onto here. We should find that will work a lot better. Okay, now we can actually delete our old box, box object there unhide all okay we're starting to get there now so the next thing we're going to look at is modeling these kind of indents here okay so if you just select the main area and go to polygon mode and then just select a polygon here and then select every other polygon. If you want to, you can just do hide unselected so that you can work on this one model. And if you find that you've got a kind of uneven set of polygons, just select one at a time as you work your way around here. Again, this is an important reason to make sure that you set the number of sides in your model first. Let's do it like that. Okay, then we'll hit the inset options. And in there we'll just select by polygon. Now as we can see they're crossing over at the moment so we don't want that so let's reduce the amount say to about there check that underside area and 
that's not working very well, so we'll just leave that. Yep, so we'll do it like that instead. We'll just inset that and then we'll extrude that in. And there we go, we have that kind of nice bit of detail now. Now I'll just hit P then to go back into perspective mode. Okay, so the next thing we're going to add is this kind of front shift area here. And to do that, we'll use a sphere. So we'll just click and drag to create a sphere. Again, use Alt X to balance it out. There to line it up. Now, if we look at the actual kind of topology of this sphere, you'll notice that we've got this kind of top bit in the plan but our model's not really going to suit that. So what you can actually do is if you just rotate the model 90 degrees, then you can see that's going to make it a lot kind of easier to work with. So what we'll do, we'll add an edit poly modifier. We'll go to the um, big view here. And we'll just go to vertex mode and just drag this down to bring it in line and then we'll pull that vertically up go to edge mode and select all those edges there and what I did there was uh, when I rotate around I just hit F to go to front mode and then Z to zoom into what I've got selected and then we'll connect those and we'll add maybe two segments to that. In scale mode, again making sure that you're on the inner triangle so that you scale on all axes, that will just scale on those two. We'll scale those up and we'll scale that one up as well. Go back to front view and hit Z come out of the core here and there we have it, we have our uh, let's line it up on each of our views and there we have it, we have our kind of basic ship model made um, what I want you to do now is just kind of go around the model and if you look at the plans to start adding in all these little, little details using the tools that we've used so far.